Welcome back. I have some exciting news for you. Out of the hundred basic facts that you set out to master, you only have ten facts left. But I must warn you, these are the same facts that have caused many a recruit to stumble. So the numbers have sent that very special agent to help you learn these challenging facts. Seven's method is truly unique, as you shall soon see. So please join us as the recruits learn to navigate their way through some rather dangerous territory in order to master this final set of facts. Good morning, recruits. Good morning. It's good to be back with you here at the camp. I hear excellent reports of your progress from Sergeant 3 and from the other numbers as well. As a matter of fact, I hear you've almost completed this phase of your training. Today we'll begin tackling the facts that have proven to be the most difficult for our recruits. Facts we refer to as the troublesome facts. But before we begin, let me tell you a story about an actual mission I was on a few years back when Agent X was holed up in his secret headquarters. Capturing him would have been no trouble at all, except for one minor detail. That scoundrel had planted landmines all throughout the field that had surrounded his base of operation. Yikes! Sounds dangerous. How did you get him without blowing yourself up? Well, after weeks of surveillance, late one evening, I noticed a shadowy figure slinking across the field. Was it him? Did you catch him? It wasn't him. It was one of his cronies. And he was not nearly as sharp as his boss. After hours of interrogation, he finally gave up the secret to crossing the field. What did you do once he told you? Did you try to cross the field by yourself? Weren't you afraid he was giving you bad intel? Of course I was. That's why I insisted he go with me. That way, I could be sure he was telling the truth. Or at the very least, that he would be blown to bits with me. Anyway, I learned that there was a secret pathway made of stepping stones that snaked its way through the field. But even the path itself was booby-trapped. Step on the wrong stone, and kaboom! So how did you know what stones to step on? As it turns out, the trick of navigating the pathway was relatively easy. Well, to anyone who's acquainted with the products of the facts I told you about earlier, the so-called troublesome facts, the only stones you could step on without getting blown to pieces were the ones that correspond to the products of these facts. Look at the poster on the wall to your right. Is this the path from your story? The very one. I still don't see how you're supposed to know which stones you should step on. I wouldn't expect that you would. That is why I've prepared this other poster for you, so you can see which number corresponds to each stone in the path. Why does it start numbering the stones with 20 and not with 1? When Agent X designs his nefarious field, he decided to use the products of these troublesome facts like a secret code that he and his cronies could use to safely slip in and out of the field. Since there are no facts in the ones and the teens that seem to be troublesome, he started numbering the stones with the twenties. I'm thinking that the numbers in green mark the safe stones and the red ones will get you blown to bits. But why are some numbers yellow? The yellow ones represent numbers that are products of basic facts. But these facts are not really troublesome. Can anyone tell me which set of facts these products belong to? They're the products of fives facts. I can tell because they all have either a zero or a five in the ones place. Good observation. And how many of you found fives facts to be troublesome? Not me. Me either. They were a breeze. It's easy to see why Agent X wouldn't have included them. Exactly. While they are products of basic facts, 
They may be booby trapped, so that is why I've coloured them yellow, since this colour reminds us to proceed with caution. Would you all like to be able to go on a mission like this with me? I would. Me too. When can we start? Will it be dangerous? It could be. Perhaps we better get some practice first. We'll start with the twenties. Which numbers in the twenties will not get us blown up? Twenty-one is safe. So is twenty-four. You can stop on twenty-seven. And twenty-eight as well. So then, we'll step over the first stone in the path, the one marked twenty. Step on twenty-one. Ignore the two stones in the loop by crossing over to twenty-four. How should we proceed next? We'll skip the two stones in the next loop, mark twenty-five and twenty-six, by hopping over to twenty-seven. Then we'll step on the stone right next to it, twenty-eight. And we're done with the twenties and ready to make our way on to the thirties. But before we proceed any further, let's do what Sergeant Three is so famous for. Let's have a bit of rote and repetition. I'm going to write all four numbers from the twenties here on the chalkboard. Now repeat after me: twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Say them again. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Which ones are safe? Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Tell me again. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Can you still do it? Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So, future operatives, you have just made it safely to the first part of your journey. On to the thirties. Which stones can I safely step on in this decade? There's only two green numbers in this decade. Thirty-two and thirty-six. And how do you suggest we get to the stone marked thirty-two? We'll skip the rocks in the loop, which are twenty-nine, thirty, and thirty-one, by hopping straight across the thirty-two. And how should we proceed from there? We'll skip thirty-three, thirty-four, and thirty-five by jumping right across to thirty-six. Any more rocks in the thirties that are safe to step on? Nope. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine all have bombs under them. So in the thirties, we only have two numbers in green. This makes the thirties very easy to remember, since there are only two of them, and both numbers are even. Now for a little more drill. Repeat after me: twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six. Say them again. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six. One more time. Twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty-two, thirty-six. Excellent. Now for the forties. What are the safe numbers in this decade? There are two even numbers that are safe: forty-two and forty-eight. And one of them is the first even number in the forties, if you don't count forty, that is. And forty-eight is the last even number in that decade. First and last even numbers. That should be easy to remember. There's one odd number too, forty-nine, which is the very last number in the forties, and it's right beside forty-eight. I can tell you, recruits are making maps in your minds of where the safe numbers are, not only by their location but by the classification as odd or even numbers.
That's a very clever strategy. And I'm sure you can see from our poster that our only course of action to get across this decade is to leap from 36 to 42, then to 48, and lastly step right next door on 49. Let's recite all our safe numbers so far. To make it a bit easier, we will break them up into decades. The 20s, please. 21, 24, 27, 28. The 30s. 32, 36. The 40s. 42, 48, 49. Excellent. Anyone want to try and say them all without looking? I do! 21, 24, 27, 28, 32, 36, 42, 48, and 49. Bravo! Moving on to the 50s. There's only two safe numbers in the 50s, 54 and 56, and both of them are even. And they're both in the middle of the decade. Excellent! So we'll skip 50, 51, 52, and 53 by hopping across to 54. Then we'll skip 55 and step on 56. Now for the 60s. There are only two in this decade also. 63 and 64. Which are right beside each other. So, we step across from 56 to 63, then next door to 64. What about the 70s? There's only one safe number in the 70s, 72, which is even and at the beginning of the decade. Notice that there is only one green number remaining, which is 81. And once you step there, you're ready to infiltrate Agent X's secret headquarters. Let's recite the products from the 50s through to 81. 54, 56, 63, 64, 72, 81. Again. 54, 56, 63, 64, 72, 81. One more time. 54, 56, 63, 64, 72, 81. Excellent. Now, I'm going to write a number on the chalkboard, and if it is one of the products we're learning, say safe. If not, say kaboom. Safe! Kaboom! Kaboom! Safe! Safe! Kaboom! I think you're ready for a little field training. I've created a replica of Agent X's headquarters in the field of Outback. Come on, let's go see if we can make it through without getting blown up. He is kidding, right? I don't know. This is Agent 007 we're talking about. I'm pretty sure he is just teasing them. Anyway, while the recruits are on their little field trip, why don't you get some extra practice yourself? If you visit the numbers website and navigate to the folder called Other Resources, you will find a resource entitled Troublesome Facts Worksheet, which shows Agent X's path through the field. Print out a copy and see if you can correctly label the path with the safe stones. If you aren't sure which stones to label, just watch this video again. Once you have successfully completed this task, you are ready to try 007's game called Troublesome Facts, which is located in the same folder. This activity closely mirrors what our recruits will be doing with Agent 007. However, I can 100% guarantee that it is completely safe. Providing that all the recruits make it safely through their training, 
we will meet back here to match up some facts with the products you've just learned. See you then.